Dear Father in heaven, it's good to be alive. Pray you would bless me as I try to share a few thoughts. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we've been planting greens, hoping that we would have some to eat now, and the Lord has blessed abundantly. Here's a little short video clip of our little high tunnel up there, like a greenhouse, and what's inside it. Now, a lot of this was planted, you know, a couple months ago, and we're enjoying it now. Some of it's already bolting, going to seed with the rape, the collar, the mustard, different things. We're enjoying a lot of greens as we feast upon our calcium source, <laughs> greens out of the garden. Also, it's a beautiful sight for the eyes. It's very soothing. Helps the mind as well as the body. It's just amazing to plant such small seeds. Then as time passes, you see things growing. Now down here, if you don't know what this is, it's cabbage plants. And it looks like a really good crop this year. So far, so good. And over here, this is broccoli. That's an anthill, that's not broccoli. <laughs> this is broccoli. And then we have the peas growing up on the, on the fence. Snow peas, they're about ready to pick very soon. That's the, uh, that's the high tunnel. And that's the greens. And this is really a beautiful sight. If you ask me what my idea of home is, I'd say the garden, the food at the table, the fellowship in the kitchen. You know, that's home. And it's, uh, it's where your heart is. Uh, Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, there shall your heart be also. Home is where the heart is. Darlene and I, after getting back from the hospital, the child had died, a few months passed by, and then we got an experience in mission work going to Belize. I think that'll be the next video. Went down to Belize, came back, and uh, I think that spurred an interest in trying to do something to share the gospel. But it's a very difficult decision to leave home because home is where the comforts are. Home is where the family and the friends are. Home is where, you know, the good food and, uh, and your, your bed, <laughs> you know, all the comforts. And it's hard to consider leaving home. Now, we had a debt. So in order to pay the debt, and a thought, aro a thought arose that we'd probably have to sell our land. And uh, I didn't want to sell our land. We had 20 acres, Mentone, Alabama. Now we had a straight house, had a straight marriage, had a nice garden. Here's Darlene sitting out in our garden we had just a, we put so much work into it, so much work. We built the house with our own hands, did every bit of the work ourselves, and it just, it felt like home. In Genesis 12, 1, you know, Abraham, Abraham had that experience. I'm not comparing myself to Abraham, but Abraham had that experience. In 12, chapter 12, verse 1, the Lord told Abraham, I'd like you to leave your country, your family, your home, and I want you to go to a land that uh, uh, you know not. And Abraham left. You know, it says in Romans 3, 4, I'm sorry, Romans 4, 3, Abraham believed God, it was counted unto him for righteousness, he left. Before, you know, before the Lord had changed our lives, changed our marriage, you know, we get up in the morning, you know, we drink coffee, darling make pottery, we'd work in the garden, and that was, that was, that was good. But we had no deeper purpose. I mean, as far as sharing the gospel, uh, having a compassion and a care for those around us, you know, and we didn't have that. But with the gospel, with the good news, the glad tidings of salvation, there comes with it an impulse to share. And Darlene and I think the Lord has given us a purpose, which was to try to help those that don't know what we know. In other words, to share the light we had with those in darkness. And that was a real experience in Belize. The Lord really gave us an insight into what ministry was and our own shortcomings. You know, I wasn't prepared for it. I could see that I was insufficient, but the Lord was helping us. He is the great teacher, the great educator. And He met us where we were and He began to show us what we needed to know. So we had a new purpose to share. And of course, Darlene had been a patient at Wildwood Hospital. We'd been going to the health food store. You know, we were visiting their chapel, going to church. And I could see the, the, the ministry at Wildwood was shaped around health. 
So it wasn't just a preaching of the gospel. It was to use health to help people with their, their, their challenges, you know, diabetes, arthritis, obesity, uh, all sorts of things. It was to do what Christ did to help those that were sick and suffering. You see it in many, many, many places in, in the Gospels. In uh, Matthew 9, verse 22, Thy faith is made thee whole. But it was the woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. She'd been sick, spent all her money on the doctors, didn't get any help, didn't get any help, was no better. And the Lord healed her, helped her. And you see it just often. The Lord is, is engaging in healing ministry. And when you get to the book of the a book of Acts, almost half the chapters in the book of Acts has the apostles doing something regarding health ministry. You know, helping people that are sick to get well. In John chapter 9, he helped someone that was blind to get to see. So there were so many. Uh, it was a biblical foundation for the ministry I saw being practiced at Wildwood. And I thought, you know, maybe the Lord's leading us there. Maybe we should try to be part of that ministry. So I called up Wildwood. And uh, I called the personnel department because we had the debt. And I asked them, you know, about salary. And uh, they weren't paying very much. <laughs> it really surprised me. And I thought, how in the world could you make it on that? But you know, when the Lord is discussing these kind of issues about how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, you, you the food, the clothing, the shelter, how do you provide for yourself and your family? In Matthew 6, 31 and 32, he talks about the needs, the present needs, food, clothing, shelter. He says the Gentiles have need of these things. Sure, the Lord knows we need, th we need things to function, to live. But in verse 33, seek ye first. The Lord has to be first and foremost. The kingdom of God, and then all the other things he'll add unto us. And so I was trying to get focused in, have tunnel vision for God's plan, and to try to disregard uh, my, my fretting and my concerns for the future. And I thought, no, we just need to walk by faith. And so as we were meditating and praying and, and getting ready to make a decision, went to visit a lady Darlene had worked for in CDC, Centers for Disease Control. Her name was Sarah, real nice lady. We visited with Sarah and Max. And I was in the living room talking to Max. He knew we were, uh, we were, we were just about decided to, to go to Wildwood, join the ministry. And he asked me, because he had, he had a real concern for us. He wanted, he, he wanted the best for us. And he said, you know, what's, uh, what's the salary uh, like at Wildwood? How much are you going to be paid? And I told him, well, not much, but we get food and a place to stay. And he said, but what about retirement? What about benefits when you get older? I said, well, there aren't any. And then he asked me, how are you gonna how are you gonna live I said well by faith and then he said it's easier for you to say that now I was about 35 years old but he said 30 years from now 65 years old what are you gonna say then and I said well I guess I gotta live and walk by faith and he was not a Christian and I don't think he understood what I was saying but that was a decision we'd made so we went back home, called up Wildwood, said we're coming, packed up her bags, went to Wildwood, sold our land, paid off her debt. We were officially homeless. But my dear friends, I, we had a peace that passes understanding. John 14, 27, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives it. The world can't give it, the world can't take it away. And you know, that's worth more than any earthly treasure. When we got to Wildwood, this is the little home we lived in. It was a place called Acorn up on the hillside. And it was a kind of a ramshackle little place. Darlene and I, you know, we got there. I think our first night there, probably there was uh, some uh, fretting and some praying. But, you know, as I look back now, 30 years, more than 30 years ago, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. So may God give us all a deepening purpose as the years roll by, always believing and knowing that the best years are still ahead. God bless you, my friends. You have a nice day.